on 94.7 The Block, New York City, and we are here in the birthplace of hip hop, the BX, the Boogie Down, the Bronx, and we are here with Rocky Bucano from the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Rocky, hi! Hello, Shelly! First of all, thank you so much for having us. I was This is my first visit to the museum, so I was super excited. So thanks for having us. Oh, uh, well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad to have you guys here. I understand that this museum is your baby. This is your brainchild. Um, how long ago did you come up with it, and what was your what was your inspiration? So this uh, this museum started 13 years ago mm -hmm. with myself, the guy that's standing behind us. The legend back here. The legend, <laughs> Cut Man LG, <laughs> and a few other gentlemen. You know, iconic. Iconic names from hip hop like uh, Grand Wizard Theodore, Grandmaster Mel. Uh, we we all joined together 13 years ago to pursue this what I call a dream uh -huh. to establish a permanent half of hip hop. Mm -hmm. And here we are today. We're sitting in what we call the, the Revolution of Hip Hop, which is a sneak preview. Of uh, our future museum, which is right across the street under construction. Yeah, so we're, this is a pop up. This is a pop up, but as they say. <laughs> we, we call it more of an immersive journey through hip hop. Uh -huh. uh, and it is a sneak preview of our future museum. So, and we get people from all around the world. Like we have visitors from Canada today and, and Germany. And, and, you know, people just love coming up to the Bronx to experience true hip hop. So you said 13 years ago you came up with this. Now, of course, uh, 94.7 The Block and Odyssey are celebrating this year's 50th anniversary of hip hop with Hip Hop Made. Did you even ha have this in mind, the 50th anniversary of hip hop in mind, when you came up with this idea 13 years ago? No, you know, when, when we came up with this, it was really, uh, it kind of like fell in my lap because I was running the uh, New York Gaucho basketball program. Okay. And I wasn't really think, even thinking about a hip hop museum, but the uh, real estate partner that wanted to help the Gaucho expand really threw up the opportunity you know, because he needed something that was related to music to be part of his project. And I just suggested to him, why not start a hip hop museum? And from that moment, at that point, that's when this project got to start. So now that we are in um, the 50th anniversary of hip hop, what does it mean to you to be such an integral part of the commemoration, the celebration um, with the Universal Hip Hop Museum? It, it's, it's an honor to just be included in a milestone moment for hip hop. You know, uh, I started as a teenage DJ in the early 70s. Uh -huh. So I've been around hip hop even before it was hip hop. And to see it go from where it started to where it is today is completely, you know, inspiring. Because, as you already know, when it first started, yeah. there wasn't a lot of support for it. No. As a matter of fact, people did not want it to even uh, go beyond a couple weeks. They thought it was going to be a fad and it was going to come and go. And here it is, getting ready to turn 50 years old in August. And that's what's so astonishing to me when hip hop started. No one even thought it would be around for 50 years. No one even gave that consideration. And then when hip hop radio started, I remember, no one even thought that that could be a success and here we are. So um, how do you feel as a person who started DJing way back in the 70s to see hip hop reach 50? It's, it's amazing, you know, but that just goes to show you that, you know, what was started just as a means for teenagers to have fun on the streets and then became a commercial product that people can actually earn a living from. And see artists like LL Cool J and Public Enemy, X-Clan, Queen Latifah, Missy Elliott, Kendrick Lamar, tour to stadiums filled with people that love the music and love the culture is phenomenal. Yeah, and to see people, like you were saying, Latifah and LL, and they are such legends and still are so vital. They're on 
big movie screens, on TV screens, everything they touch successful and it's all from their starts, their beginnings um, in hip hop. It's just really astonishing and amazing. It, it is, it is. And, and, and you know, just think about you know, who they were when they first started. They were just kids. They were kids. They were kids. They had no idea that they would be doing what they're doing today when they first started. And to see that hip hop is such a part of the fabric of America, and not only America, but the entire world. It's just really You can't go anywhere in the world and not have the hip hop experience. You can go to the deepest corners of South America and see hip hop. You can go all the way to Asia and see hip hop. I love it. Hey, listen, before you give us a tour of the museum, can um, you tell us uh, what uh, the vision of the museum is uh, when it's, you know, the construction is finally done and what we'll be able to see and what it'll mean to hip hop when it's completed? Well, hip hop will have a permanent home that is going, going to be responsible for documenting preserving and celebrating not just what has happened 50 years ago but what is happening because hip hop is a living breathing culture so it's going to be a continuum of where it started how it started to where it is today with the most amazing immersive technologies to bring the stories to life many artifacts from hello cool j to coolio to snoop dogg to james brown and george clinton because they're part of hip-hop as well yeah and so many people from all over the world this is going to bring people from all over the world to the bronx the birthplace of hip-hop that's what that's what the mission and the vision is 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 to make sure that we have a permanent space where anyone from anywhere in the world can come visit enjoy what they like but also be informed about things that they don't know yeah. we want them to come out with a complete understanding of what hip-hop culture is all about and that's what the universal hip-hop museum will do when it opens in 2024. do you have any special features of the museum so far no anything that's your favorite no no well i, I will tell you this there is going to be a special announcement as part of Hip Hop 50 later this summer. You can't give us the scoop? I can't Come give on, you the Rocky. scoop. I can't give it because it's, it's going to be too big. <laughs> but but you're well, be, I have a front row seat. You will be the first to know. But Love it. we're going to immortalize an, an icon from Hip Hop. We're going to immortalize their lyric on what we call the lyric wall, which is on the exterior of the University Hip Hop Museum. So that lyric that we have chosen will be there forever for future generations to see. I cannot wait to find out what lyric it is. You know, I have a feature on my show called Shelly's Trivia. I'd like for you to give me the scoop at that time right. so that I can ask the trivia and you know, it can be, you know, I can be a part of that, that absolutely. history. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And when will the, um, the, the permanent museum be opening? end 2024. Okay, so the end of next year. And next so the 51st year. anniversary of hip hop is in a little bit. That is correct. All right, so uh, would you mind giving us a tour of the museum? Sure, let's do it. Let's do this. So we're here at the entrance to the Revolution of Hip Hop, mm -hmm. and we got two great artifacts right here. Uh -huh. The first one is the drum right here, mm -hmm. which belongs to Slick Rick the Ruler. Great Slick Rick. Are you sure that I cannot sit in this? Can I? that he was able to donate that to us. But it. one of the other most important artifacts in the entire exhibit is this bicycle that's floating right over your head. Yeah. And that was donated to us by Coolio. This is cool, oh my gosh. Rest in peace, Coolio. This was his lowrider bike? That's his lowrider bike. He, he donated that right, right before he passed away. He donated, he donated it to us. Did he have a story that went along with it? Well, you know, it's part of our television show. We have a television show. Love it. that he uh, wore on tour 
This can go. This can go. <laughs> and troop clothing was part of the urban fashion style back then. Big brand. Everybody had to have a troop suit. Yeah. And, and what's interesting is that same suit is playing in the little video on this television right here. Oh my God, that is the same suit. That's the same suit. You know, so pretty amazing that, you know, LO could never fit in that suit today. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's great to have these kind of artifacts in, in the museum. Yeah, the Latin Quarter of the Nightclub is one of the most important clubs during this time period. Uh, but what's interesting is a lot of the artists that performed at the Latin Quarter, you know, they, they really made a name for themselves by, you know, by, by having access to that club. And one of the artists that really became super popular from performing at the Latin Quarter is Biz Markie. So his wife uh, is actually responsible for loaning us this beautiful rope chain here and his rhyme book and the Gucci sneakers over there. Uh, the Biz War. So it just shows how hip hop and fashion went hand in hand. And it's been that way from the beginning of hip hop. Been that way from the very beginning.